how will the notification system change? Notifying, notifying us downstream. And the reason I ask, a year or two ago, my, oh yeah, we have to play some with the pitcher. My lad's playing around the water. We kayak a lot, Scott, like you do. And enjoy the water, get the truck. I'll have a text from a local official, stay out of the river. This field happened four or five days prior. We just found out that day. And I've been in the river playing with my lab and having a good time on the Wisconsin River. How will the notification system change to guarantee that everyone, even those who don't have email and internet access on the river, know about these bills? Because that, to me, is criminal, criminal neglect because you're endangering their lives. I mean, because you're in that water, their animals are in that water, their farm animals are in that water, and no one knows. I don't think I have an answer to that. You ask anybody on that email list, you can get it by phone, you can get it by um, notification. You get more specific with it as well. Um, if it's anywhere near a waterway, obviously we don't want an egg on anybody's face. We had right. one person in the campground get a reverse 911 call, and we had quite a few people in the campground have no internet. <coughs> so we're trying to take care of ourselves, and we're trying not to be dependent upon any government organization, because we do, you know, with the exception of a few people, um, you know, a lot of the people in Hamilton County, it's a poor county. So the, the folks that can help, I think, are helping to do the job of it. But there has to be several ways of getting their advice. Mr. Parker, is anybody here from Madison County? Uh, do y'all live within how far the river? Three miles. Did y'all get our code red announcements on your telephone? Yes. Okay, so we have a code red system in Madison County in our emergency management can uh, pinpoint target areas in the county, put out a, a blast phone call, uh, automated message that, that gives those type of warnings. Well, I'm glad to see that in our county, that, I think that system worked pretty good. And uh, so I don't know if Hamilton or Swanee has code red or similar type of announcement notification system. Y'all are you relying a lot on the systems to tell you communications. I'm assuming that their battery or generator backup in the, in the event of a catastrophic electrical outage, they all are on battery or generator backup. My other question is, and I don't know if you can do it in this particular area, but uh, have y'all looked at uh, high injection uh, well, well pumps for overflow of the sewage? They do uh, use them in Collier County, in South Florida. They pump 35,000 feet down in, into the aquifer, but scientists have said by the time it comes out in the ocean, it's purified. Yeah, now that's a uh, pretty uh, not not allowed statement. To do it. Yeah, we only allow to be surface discharge. I know down out in Gainesville, Florida, they have a deep well injection. They actually, instead of surface water injection, they Dug a well 3,500 feet, and they're pumping it in the ground 3,500 feet. Uh, you know, some pros and cons. Some folks are pro to that. Some folks don't think they uh, that should be happening either. So, you know, still some science needs to be done up in this area to make sure it's all right. soil condition. Yeah, well, they use a bubble effect. system in South Florida. Yep. They inject them into the uh, brackish water. They're system. going into the lower, lower Florida. I don't know if yeah, you can do that more up. Yeah, I don't know. You get higher in the trigger, it's hard to get those. Or the lower well, whatever you can do to communicate with us, get us some information, and support us, uh, and me as a citizen, I greatly appreciate your help. Mm -hmm. I have a question about those three alerts in Florida. The first one was put out on the 10th when all anybody knew was there was spill. Okay, better safe than sorry. The second one was put out when, as I understand it correctly, Valdosta found an elevated bacterial level at US 84, which I believe <coughs> we heard earlier is right next to the state line. Uh, does anyone in Valdosta know how many river miles from US 84 to the state line? Uh, 27, or about three days. And is anybody measuring at the intermediate boat ramps to see how the sewage is moving down the river? Valdosta, for example, is Valdosta doing that? No. We have uh, an answer from Tom Murdy of Swanee River Water Management District. We have done that, yeah. As you know. <coughs> I mean, did you do it at Knight's Ferry? We haven't done, done it consistently, but we have done it. 
when a, when a spill, you know, when a, when a location popped up, at, you know, either at 84 or at 31, and we looked upstream and downstream in conjunction with DOH and DEP on specific days. Yeah, on specific days. And we did a site. We did a site. Okay, and with the nice here in Ag and USA tour and state line, but Valdosta has not. Valdosta Incorrect. basically flushed its sewage down the river. No, no sir. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. When I just, just like the gentleman here said, when we got that hot spot at Mike's Creek, we went down there. And we took our crew down there. They took samples. They did the lab work. We took it to a lab in Thomasville where the other folks were going to say, oh, they're just making the numbers up. The numbers that you were posted on your Facebook were much higher than the independent lab and our own folks said. So I really can't let you stand there and not say we hadn't been out there and do it. And you ever returned that data in response to the open records request I fired a week ago? I will have to talk to the city clerk about that. You can file it with me, sir. I asked you in your office earlier. And I gave you all the data. You asked me for the data every 